Hi everybody, this is Anne. Today we're going to experiment with geometric pattern textures on mugs and a vase by making simple cuts out of this fine ribbed rubber mat that I purchased at the hardware store. The supplies we used for measuring and cutting the mat were a piece of scrap plywood placed under the mat for cutting on, a utility knife, a triangle square, and a long straight edge ruler. Here are the various templates we created. This one was cut for vertical and horizontal patterns. We cut this one on the diagonal. Here we mixed horizontal and vertical pattern pieces to create a contemporary feel. Next we cut strips diagonally opposed for a herringbone effect. Finally, we repurposed some old craft stamps that we had to create a horizontal and diagonal square stamp. We also created a hexagonal stamp that we thought might give us neat complex patterns. The first piece I made was a simple, fine, straight line texture for a hand-built mug. I rolled out a long, thin, quarter-inch slab to work on. I created a 10.5 inch long, thin template to block off the rim section of the mug. I placed the template towards the top of the slab, making sure to imprint the top edges of the template into the clay. I then placed a section of the rubber mat down, just overlapping the bottom edge of the template. I used a rolling pin to apply even pressure against the mat into the clay. I taped the bottom rectangular section of the template to the top section and placed the whole thing down over the slab, lining up the imprints along the top edge that I made earlier. I then marked the template with a pin tool. I took off the template, placed a ruler along each straight side, and made the cuts. When I removed the clay, here's what I ended up with. I was really pleased. I set the slab aside so it could stiffen up a bit. The second pattern I created was a diamond texture. I used the same technique with the long, thin template as the last mug, but this time I turned the mat sideways so the lines were on point. I then rolled the texture onto the clay. I picked up the mat and turned it 90 degrees so the lines were going in the opposite direction, again on point. I then rolled that texture over the first imprint. Like the first, I cut the mug template, leaving this cool pattern. I had a couple of tiny areas where the mat picked up the clay. It was easy to repair with a long edge of a needle tool, like so. The third design was the checkerboard. I made the first impression with the mat lines north to south, like on the first mug. I then picked up the mat and turned it sideways so the lines were east to west, then rolled the pattern over the first. The fourth design is my favorite, the herringbone. We cut diagonal strips off the mat, flipping every other strip so that they created a zigzag pattern. We taped them together on the back, then proceeded to use it just like the other designs. Since the strips were not exactly even across the top, I used a triangle square along the vertical lines to make sure I would make a straight imprint. I then rolled the texture. 
Because the texture had opposing patterns, I found it was easier to pull up the mat working from south to north. Fifth, we created a patchwork design for a vase. We cut a large poster board template into four random sections, then cut mat pieces going in different directions in the shape of each of the template parts. We taped the pieces together to reform the rectangular shape. I rolled the textures onto the slab and removed the mat to create this beauty. Like all the others, I set this aside so the clay had a chance to set up. In the meantime, we created these stamps. For this one, I cut a mat into a one inch square with the lines vertical. I had an old stamp that I was able to glue the mat to and use as a handle. I found that if I pressed the image side by side, turning the stamp 90 degrees each time, it created a basket weave texture. The next stamp was cut on point like so. Luckily I had another old stamp that I could glue the mat to. I again turned the stamp 90 degrees before stamping into the clay and created this beautiful diamond shaped pattern. Next we cut out a hexagon shape, then found the center of the hexagon and drew three straight lines out to every other point, like this. It created a 3D box design, which we call the Stampy 250. <laughs> Again, we stamped shapes right beside each other to create this interlocking design. In addition, still using the Stampy 250, I impressed the stamp, gave the stamp a quarter turn, then stamped over the first imprint to create this pinwheel design. For even more fun, I stamped the center of the pinwheel with a marker pen top. In the same vein, we took the square stamp cut on point and tried the same technique. I stamped in one direction, turned the stamp a quarter turn, then stamped again to reveal this design. When alternated with just the single imprint texture, you create an intricate checkerboard pattern. Finally, just in time for the 2021 Olympic Games, we came up with this alternate to the checkerboard pattern. The stars and stripes. <laughs> now that the clay is stiffened up, we can construct the mugs in the vase. I used a PVC pipe covered with plastic wrap to round the clay. I didn't have a fancy beveling tool, but I did the best I could to bevel the edges. I 
I then scored and slipped the edges. I removed the pipe and then the plastic wrap. I then carefully pushed the edges together as gently as I could and added a bottom. Some of the textures were more difficult to line up than others, so for some of them, I left a solid section where the joint was. When the clay stiffened to a leather hard, I carefully cleaned up the lines and removed the little scraps like so. Then I attached the handles. I did relatively the same thing for the larger vase, but really wanted to create a seamless joint to make the pattern look like there was no beginning or end. And here's what I came up with. and all made from a simple rubber mat. If you liked our video, we'd appreciate it if you would like, share, and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.